I love pike fishing. Not only do I like catching them on dead baits, I like catching them on lures. And like most anglers, I've got a box of fishing lures. Spinners, plugs, veins, divers, poppers, swimmers, everything you could think of. And do you know what they catch? That's right, they catch anglers, they don't catch fish. Most of these in here, I haven't even caught anything on, but some of them are good patterns, and that's worth knowing about if you're a lure fisherman. Let's take a look in this box, and I'll try and show you a few of the lures that I've done really well on. Now you can keep your lures in any sort of box, really, but I've got one of these that's got these, these little hinges at the back, and they pop up. So you can just pop up and take the lure out you want like that big spoon and the hooks just rest in little notches all the way along here so that you can pop them all up take them all out it's pretty handy actually still a bit of a mess but let me show you which ones are the different ones to use for pike okay now for pike fishing these are what we call the basic alphabet sort of shape plugs it's just a big fat belly tapered off at the back here standard sloping vein on the front and they just have a standard wiggle backwards and forwards backwards and forwards but some of them as you can hear have yes a rattle in them as well so that adds uh, a bit of attraction this one is traditional this would be my best fish fish catcher i would guess in water of say up to six feet deep but a good shallow water plug it floats if you stop winding it comes up to the surface you can waddle it along the surface it's called a big s i think it's made by shakespeare i've had a lot of pike on these obviously that's a brand new one but you know trust me that's a really good plug to start with and this fire color as well is excellent but that's one standard shape of plug that you can move on and i'll show you the different shapes these ones are what i call a standard shad but they're deep runners now look at the steep angle on that if I put this one back in here and it just gives you an idea if you look at the angle of the lip here try and line them up a bit it's much steeper it's much longer on this on this well, I call it a shad that's going to run really deep and this sort of big s alphabet plug is a lot shallower back here so that tends to push it up towards the surface and this lip here will tend to make it dive down deep these are all good deep water plugs. These are what I would call sort of like a pencil run of these. It's like a pencil popper, which has no vein. These do have a vein, so they will dive down, but they have a sort of angle, a sort of slow throbbing angle. You can wind them quite fast, but they won't really throb and vibrate. Got three hooks on them, which, you know, probably two sets of trebles too much as far as I'm concerned. I'm not a great lover of trebles. And then we've got this type there which has no vein at all nothing no vein coming out of the bottom here but it does have a flat surface area there which catches the water and that drives it down and the actual holding point for your trace is there so you know it's going to pull downwards like this all the time that's a sinker as well so you have to watch out for that you don't want it sinking to the bottom standard shad what i call a standard shad pattern would be these which are floaters and they can nevertheless with this long lip dive down deep if you pull them through fast or if you want to fish them slower, you can do. And always look at the difference in the vein on the front. See that scoop vein there? That means that's not going to go down quite as deep as this one. Now you can also get a jointed plug. Now these are pretty good because they add a sort of bit of ag aggravation factor, I think, to it. Because they can wobble at the back as well. So they've got the vein to dive down here. You still get that diving down effect there. But with that join there, they're going to have a good throbbing movement sort of sinuous sort of snaky look to them these can be really good catchers on their day obviously they're all different colors well you know it catches the anglers more than it catches a fish but you know i'd say something like that with that bit of orange and a green back as good as anything then you have these ones this style of plug now here's a standard jointed plug now that has a fixed scoop vein you see a big round scoop vein on the front of that so that's going to dig. Now this will generally rise up to the surface and if you want to wind it faster, you just you get it a little two, three feet deep, probably no more than about three feet maximum, and even, even if you wound it fast. But that jointed action is good. And I don't know if you can still get these. I think these were made by Abu years ago, the high lows. They had an adjustable vein. You can click it, look. So you can make a shallow popper there, boost the vein up there, 
shallow running. Two more clicks and it's really, really digging in there and that's gonna drive it down deep. Plus, of course, you've got that really waggly joint. They are good plug. These high lows are really, really good plugs. I don't know if they make them now. I've still got some left and I won't be losing them anytime soon, I can assure you, I hope. Moving on to the super duper deep runners. The vein tells its own story. That's one of my better plugs. It runs down deep. But look at the vein on this one. This plug will just go so deep you probably never get it back. So just think gravel pits for that. Anywhere that's not too snaggy, clear open ground. And two trebles on it. What I call bite size, nice size plug. Great big plastic vein on the front. And the wire actually extends through the plastic lip of the vein. And with a little O-ring there to join your link swivel to it. Then you have little paddle poppers and paddling bugs that come across the surface like this one, which is surface poppers really. And this one pops across the surface and you can actually hear it audibly coming across the surface to you. Uh, summer piking, shallow water, two feet or less, around weed beds, it's good. Other than that, not my best catcher, but the amusement factor on this one, brilliant. Okay, spinners and spoons, traditional Big copper spoon, cast like a bullet, but sinks like a bullet as well. So you've got little rings here, you can actually put split rings and tie on extra trebles. You can put extra trebles on there if you want. Uh, probably recommend one near up the front, because that's quite a big, uh, big spoon, that one. Now these wobble in the water and flutter. So if you wind them fast, they wobble and flutter fast. Yeah, they're best fish rather than constant if you fish them fast stop, fast stop, fast stop. So they rise up, then they flutter down, rise up, flutter down. That's how they work. Traditional spinners, which everybody should know about. Doesn't matter whether you've got the little red tag on the back or not. And these are revolving blades. They spin round and round that bar like this. But they also have the benefit of sending out a vibration. And that is really good. I like these. You generally... You can only fish them fairly slow. The slower the better. And that red tag's a good target for the pike to home in on up here. But they spin and spin and spin like this. Um, you probably want a lead near them. I used to use a Y lead to try and get them down, which is a shape lead. Very, very good basic pike catcher. Not a big pike catcher, but a good one for small fish. Moving on to the, the future, you've got rubber. A lot of latex plugs are coming in. This is a pretty good one, especially for perch and small pike. It's got a weighted head there. It's got an attachment ring at the front, but it's all ridged and jointed. You can see it's very, very lifelike and you can tweak that through the water. And it's, it's soft rubber as well. The downside of these, okay, you've got one hook, which is good to get out of the pike, but unfortunately, yeah, they get chewed up pretty bad. Good for the tackle dealer, bad for you. Moving on to the new range. These are popular. These have been used quite a bit. I've made this one up with my own uh, double treble trace on. That's a sidewinder lure, which is brilliant for bass. And that really is a great fish catching one. That's made out of a nice latex rubber and good tail at the back. You can see the tail there for waggling. Really good. And a weight inside there, you might be able to just see it quite a long from there to there is a lead weight. Get it down, don't use it in shallow water, use it in deep and fish it at a constant speed. Finally, the creme de la creme, as far as I'm concerned, I don't even know if you can buy these guys. They are 100% my best fish catchers. They're called Barramundi plugs. I bought them, they're all wood, they're heavy, they dive down, you can fish them slow, you can fish them fast, they throb, they vibrate, they are absolutely superb. Nice split rings, nice hooks. They've caught me probably more pike than anything, but I'm running out of my stock of these. I got them when I was over in Australia, they're brilliant. Look at the state of that, that is just, that one needs banning, doesn't it? Look at it, it is absolutely chewed to oblivion. Yes, you've got to imagine that fluorescent green is a very good colour for me. Also like this colour. That's a new one, obviously, but good colour as well. So there you go. That gives you a basic breakdown of some of the plugs. And fingers crossed, we need to go fishing now. Let's get off down the river, see what we can catch. Okay, guys, I want to go fishing. I want to go lure fishing. There's one I always start off with. It's that one. It's like a big S. I think they call them alphabet plugs. But you'll notice, if you can hear that, it's got a rattle inside it. The big downside I like, I don't like about those, is they've got trebles on them. Nice to have singles, but that's what they come with. You can change them with split rings. So this one obviously dies down deeper the faster you wind it, but only to a certain level. So I'm going to start off with this one and just basically work through the water layers. 
and this is the way you do it. Straight cast out, shut the veil on. There are two ways, you can keep the tip high if you want to keep the lure high and just pop it gently, almost like a bait really, just pop it gently. Or you can hold it down lower and do a constant speed, constant winding like that. And you get that throbbing constant action with it. That's how, you know, either of them work. It just depends, you know, how the fish are going to take during the day. General speaking, faster you wind, deeper it goes, slower you wind, it comes up in the water. And of course this one, that one's a floater. I've got plenty of different colours, but I find that sort of nice white belly in this, well, it's got a slight colour in the river today. That sort of gets them kicked on a bit if they're going to take. Fingers crossed. Right, immediately I've got a problem. This plug, it's a floater, and although you can wind it, the current is so, f well, it's not fast, fast, but it's, it's a bit faster than I imagined. So it's, even though I'm cranking away here, it's bringing the plug well up in the water, too high, I can't get down. I'm gonna change it, and as I mentioned before, that angle on the lip on the plug, the front of the plug, it's a bit shallow on those, uh, on those alphabet plugs. A steeper one will send it down. I've got just a plug, I've got an old Australian one. I'll show it to you, it's really chewed. Get rid, hang it on the lens for now. There you go, and this one, totally different. I mean, <laughs> it's not been chewed, it's been bombarded. It's a Barramundi plug. I've got several of them, I bought when I was in Australia. They are very, very, very good. And just, I guess, straight wood. And they dive like crazy. And they catch a lot of pike. In fact, if I crank this one, speed crank this one, it's gonna go so deep, it'll probably turn up in cans. Let's get it out there. So now this one, oh, cast like a bullet too. This one, I don't like to fish, unless it's really deep gravel pit, this is a river, I won't fish it down and crank it fast because it will, it will gouge the bottom out. I'll lose it basically is what I'm trying to say. So try and keep the rod up and you can fish it very, very slow this one. Very slow because it pulses, it just darts and pulses down. Well, it's got a constant throb to it all the time if you do a, a, a steady retrieve. But I'm just telling you that the hits I get on this lure, you see the teeth marks on it, is when I just pop it and tweak it. I just got eaten by this big, big pike. I think it's a good fish. On that green plug I showed you, it's a good fish. I just hope, the thing with plugs is, oh yeah, this is a nice fish. The thing with these plugs, you got one tail hook, if that's in the fish, and the other one is outside, you can get, you can get snagged. Ah, oh, he's come off. He's come off, and that's a good fish as well. Oh well, at least we hooked the first one. Got another one on the lure, it's only a small fish this time. That last one was a really good fish. Oh, this is a nice, nice little scrapper though. Can't grumble at this one. And the thing is, with lure fishing, you just gotta keep working at it all the time, looking for depths and stuff like that. It's only a small fish, three pound, four pound, but it's still a pike. And it's on a lure. Let's get the net. That's sort of made up for losing that other one. But not really, that was a big fish. Oh, let's take a look at it. There we go. And he's just, he's got that barramundi plug, which you can see is totally chewed up, right in the scissors there. But the problem with piking on lures is these front trebles, it didn't happen with that big fish, the hook's just pulled out of that one. But the front trebles can snag in the weed, they can snag in the net, just you're gonna net it and the fish tears off and you lose it. So this was a bit of a lucky one, and you just get those trebles out like that. Drop it down, hopefully not in the net, and there you go. Well, that is, if I had to say anything, that's probably my favourite plug. But I had that fish over the other side. Oh, I was a bit disappointed to lose that one. That fish, you guys will have to believe me, but it was 12, 12 to 15. It was, a, it was a damn good fish. It's just nipping at it. It's weird, just nipping at it. But the problem with the lure fishing is, and this is a tip, just take six sprats with you, dead baits, anything, dace, dead dace, you know, dead naturals, dead sea baits. Because with a lure, this is my experience, 
if they don't take it, if they follow into the right to the bank and turn away, you rarely, rarely get a second take at them. Now, I've had five follows now right to the bank. A couple of them have just nipped at the tail of this, bang, bang, gone, you know, so they're definitely feeding differently. My experience is, do your lure fishing. If you're starting to get follows, clip up a bait, go through the same swim. Don't need to go, to, go down all the river doing it. You can often pick a fish out, and that's a bonus fish, because with lures, you can't stop them. If you stop them, they don't work. With a bait, you can almost hang it there in their face. And my experience is, you're gonna pick off the old fish. A little bit of bonus fishing for you, as well as the lures. He's not even hooked, he's just looped around the top. Really? Yeah. Just, I think there's one hook in him. It's not inside his mouth. See, I've, I've had seven takes today and I wonder why. It, he must the, have just flashed at it and it, it took a turn around the top. He might come off. Probably, they're like yeah, just look, curious. It's just, uh, it's just hanging on the outside. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's just on the lip. Yeah. Well. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, I got him out. I don't want to get that hook in my hand, that's the thing. All right, now I've got him. Yeah, you can see there, I want to put the bait out. I just had that, that one fish on the lure, and I've been getting little bumps on it. It's not a bad fish, about eight pounds, but he's hooked right on the outside. Right there. Another nice one, most peculiar fight, but that's because it's wrapped around the outside. The trace had wrapped around the outside of the fish. Well, I'll tell you what, I was pleased to uh, to catch that fish on the bait because they're really annoying when they follow you on lures. And as I say, just take even three or four baits. Then if you're getting follows all the time, you know, at least you can pick the fish off. Wait for this. Two Romanian lure anglers came up, saw the fish I was catching. Brilliant. I got bait, sprats. They went off to the shop, bought some sprats. I hooked the bait up for the guy. His name was Gigi, <laughs> went down to the swim, put it in the swim, wait for this, he got one, first cast, how big? 16 pounds, I think it was 16, 8, 16, 12, 16 and a half I think it was. Let's check this fish out, it's unbelievable really, talk about lucky fishing, but there you go, you've got to be on the water, you've got to be in it to win it. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, you want to net him? First cast. First cast, first fish on the river tower. Oh, and he doesn't go off again. You got him. He's going to go, that's a nice fish. That's probably double figures. That's a good fish, yeah. Which Out of throat. fish on the what? river, river Stour. 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 Yeah, That's a beauty, yeah. On Sprat, Twitch Sprat. I think you'll be selling all your lures. <laughs> that's a nice fish. 16 and a half pounds, got a photo of it, put the guy on the fish, brilliant. But that's got that out of the way because, you know, you get the odd fish on, on bait like that, but I was lucky with a bonus. Back to the plug, back to casting. I want to see if I can get something else on a lure. I'm going to work my way up river. And if I keep getting follows, I'm going to chuck different lures out, you know, go from light to dark, different colours, big ones, small ones. But the main thing is the depth, the depth and the speed, the pulsing of the, of the lure. So that, I, I feel that's the main point with lure fishing. We're on, we're on. Second one on a green lure. Oh, oh, he's not a bad fish. Not a bad one. Oh, please don't come off this time. Let's look at this. Oh, no, there's no net. Oh, Jesus. He's not going to help me, is he? I suppose he could if he's walking, you know. Oh, this is, this is a good fish. I don't want to lose it. Oh, he's going for the trees. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Oh, jeez, jeez. Man, this is... I'm in big trouble guys, big trouble. It's going downstream, loose treble, snags. I'm gonna kill the camera a minute. Okay, I think I'm back in, he's gone out in the middle. So I'm back in some really fast walking. He hit the plug, I did two, two or three winds. Oh, what? 
Oh, just hang there, just hang there. Uh, stay calm, Mr. Mannering. The net's over there. Can you believe it? Dear God. This fish is a good double, I think. How the hell am I going to get it? How the hell am I going to get it? Oh, man, it's big, big, big. I'm in trouble, boys. I'm going to have to put the rod down. Balance the rod on the tripod. Put the back one on. I'm going to do a sprint for this. Uh, bait runner off. Fingers crossed I don't lose the camera. Four grand camera, 100 quid of the tackle, and a huge fish. I'm back, I've got. Christ, I've got the net. I've got the net. Oh, no, 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 no. He's ripping it. It's a big fish. This is a big, big fish. He's right in the current. If he kites downstream, I'm stuffed. Because I think one of the trebles is hanging outside the jaw. Please turn. Okay, slight, slight chance, guys. Slight chance. Slight chance. Slight chance. Oh, it's a cracker. Slight chance, please. Please travel. It's a double. Get it. <laughs> totally awesome strikes again. Oh man. This is a chunky, chunky, chunky pike. Guys, we're pushing 17 on this one. You have to give me a minute to sort out now because I've got trebles in the net, which is always a pain when you're plug fishing, you know? Jesus, good fish, good fish. I'm shaking. I'm absolutely shaking. I just have to run back for the net, set the camera up. I can't, I can't, I don't want to look at this fish. Let's get zeroed. We're pushing 20 pounds, folks. We're pushing a 20 here. I'm relatively sorted. You see, I'll show you why I'm nervous. This is the downside of plugs. This is a huge pike. I'm telling you guys, a huge pike. The plug is hanging on the edge. This other treble could have caught in a snag at any time, and that is the downside of trebles. That's why I really watch. Oh, I doesn't even bear thinking about. Just, it's huge. I know it's huge. I know it's huge. It's huge. I don't know if you guys are gonna see it. I'm absolutely plastered in mud. Is it worth it? Watch this, watch this. This is so close to. Oh, oh no. no. Oh no, oh no. I've got to have another look. Would I lie to you guys, all my friends out there in YouTube land? God damn, 19 pounds. You can't be disappointed with a fish like this. Let's get a look at this fish. I thought it was a 20, I have to say. Come here, baby. You get back in a minute. Calm down. I don't know who's more, more fractious, you or me. Whew. Christ. Oh, there you go. That's what you call, Christ, I can hardly hold it. A totally awesome pike mouth there. A totally awesome pike and a totally knackered fishing filmmaker. What a beautiful fish. And was I lucky, or was I lucky? Two turns on the reel, slam. What a fish, eh? So I was lucky with that one. It's worth getting a booty for. And back she goes, a lovely fish. Pound short of 20. That's sick. Let's just let it recover. Oh, didn't even need to recover. <laughs> Good God. I mean, I'm still flying with that big, big fish. I can't believe it was. 19 and not 20, but you know, I'm honest with you guys. If it was 20, trust me, I'd have told you. I'm going back, having to go with this one. Now that, I call that my banana one. That one, it's just an old lure, and I, well, it's unbelievable, I might lose it today. God, I think I'll be in tears if I do. All chewed up. The most pike I've had on that I was, a, I went to Blenheim Palace Lake and I had 32 pike, and I think it was 31 were on a lure, and this is the lure. I've no idea, it's one of those no-name lures, but we'll give it a go in the river and because I'm in love with it I may even marry it I'm only throwing it in very very carefully selected swims I do not want to lose it but we might get lucky and something might nail it there it is folks 
on the lucky plug and I still got the plug back. Brilliant. And I got the hooks out of the net. That's even better than better than I thought, but that's a downside of lure fishing and artificial always oh, come out. With lures. You can also close the barbs down if you want. And look at that. Not a bad day's pike fishing, just to show you how these lures work. Fish up to 19 pounds. And you know the saying. I'm so naughty I'm not going home yet. Well, do you wait till my wife sees these they're my best jeans and I am caked in it, look. I am absolutely in big trouble. So I might as well stay mine not. Do all this for those YouTubers.